So we should do a little bit of a, of a commercial, so to speak, because we really do have Teresa Jacobs, Mayor Dyer, the whole project team, we really do have good, I don't want anybody to get the impression that we don't think we have, we have great government partners, we've got good corporate partners. And that's expanding. And we've got, yeah, and we've got really, really good expansion. So, but the last sort of commercial I want to do, which is interesting to a lot of people in this room, it's the part we've left out so far. You touched on it a little bit. So technology is the great equalizer in performing arts centers that we hadn't talked about. And Phil Holtz here, who's on our board. Jonathan Taylor's another guy on our board who's really tech savvy. But so Kennedy Center uh, in DC, right? They simulcast into the Washington Nationals ballpark. So I'm like, yeah, like how many people show up for that? I mean, who's going to go to a baseball stadium to look on the big screen to like the Philharmonic? I mean, this makes no sense to me. Um, however, it makes sense to the 10,000 people that show up. And the reason it works is it's because the technology is so good. And you can now simulcast and you can use handheld devices and your ear thing and all this stuff to you become this center for the arts and you can become it virtually. Mm -hmm. And um, so talk a little bit, I mean, our, literally, sure. our goal is to literally output and offload content throughout the world, not just locally, right. but to, I sure. think that's fascinating. So talk so, a little yeah, bit about so that. The, the mindset kind of, it, two things. One, these centers have been built you know, 200 years ago, 150 years ago, and technology was never really uh, in the forethought of how to design them. Just a quick example, and this is not poking fun at Miami, but they actually have phone booths still in their, in, in their design. Right. Okay, that's how long it took. They were designed. They didn't take them out, and they have actually phone booths. And it's like, okay, what do we do with this? Um, and they were creative, and they actually solved it. But we, we knew that technology was going to be very relevant for us. So in 2005, we actually started thinking about how can this center be different, and how can we be the leader in technology? In 2007, we actually did a tech summit, and we had the CTOs of Disney Universal, Lockheed Martin, uh, Bright House, uh, Siemens, Transit TV, uh, Disney Ideas, uh, EA Sports, I can go on. And all these CTOs came in and said, okay, how does this building, and it really comes down to communication. And again, the, with, the, with the notion, arts for every life. So everything was talked about. How does it communicate internally with the staff? How does it con communicate with the customer who is there? How do we communicate with patrons coming in? But how do we create a, uh, communicate with our content? And if you think about a soundstage or 20th Century Fox uh, in California, Bob knows this, they were places where content was made. And then there was the distribution outlet was through broadcast. Actually, you distribute it through technology. And then all of a sudden, these sound stages became really wonderful performing arts centers. Everybody wanted to go see how a television show was made and see a game show. And next thing you know, they started gathering people. And so they, they started distributing their content two ways, out in the media and then a place for people to come to. Art centers are never really caught up with that. So our goal, and we've already started working with the simulation and training uh, center, NOC TSD, because that technology is available, is how can we be the world's leader in simulation and training and distribution for arts education or for programming? So this is just a little example. Dr. Phillips uh, High School is a great magnet school for performing arts. And they produced a wonderful play that was written um, from uh, other kids and, and kids in Israel. And she came to us and said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could perform this? You could capture that content and then we could uh, simulcast it in Israel and have that relationship, that tie? Or how can a wonderful conductor or a hip hop teacher um, from some other part of the country or the world be teaching our kids in real time on our stage something really unique? And we can flip that because we've got a wonderful creative uh, pool here. How can we take content and get it out? So we, we don't imagine ourselves actually being a ballet school. But the Orlando Ballet has one of the best schools in the country. And they can get their content out in certain ways, but we could capture their content and then take this facility, which is actually being wired as a soundstage facility, capture the content, and get that out so more kids can learn ballet. Or better yet, more seniors can use, uh, learn ballet. We're trying to get content into senior centers. So our, our mission is not just from education for the little guys. It's really 2 to 92. I'm not sure if you've been in a retirement home, but there's zero programming. There's your focus on trying to get seniors to come to places like this. And then there's another uh, quick uh, initiative that we're doing that is very, very entrepreneurial. It has never been done before in Performing Arts Center, but we said in 2005 we're trying this and we're going to put the infrastructure in. 
We might not start it the day we open, but we have the capability to do it. And it all began, um, I don't know if you remember your first experience getting on an airplane and all of a sudden there was that little screen was right in front of you. And you thought, awesome. Right. Well then all of a sudden it comes on and you, you're captive there for advertising, for learning more about their airlines, where they're going, and you can see a movie, you can learn. So what we're doing is <clears throat> we're exploring putting tablets at every seat where you, instead of doing a billboard, uh, printed billboard uh, uh, pamphlet brochure to learn about the artist, you get there a few minutes ahead of time, the lights go down, you get a few seconds at intermission, you pass a drink uh, because you want to read it or you take it home and you never read it. Our goal is to encourage people to come to the art center through technology and, and amenities to be at the art center much earlier than 10 to 8. You know, do you want to be in your seat earlier or, you know, having a social exchange with people? Um, and having that tablet there, you can learn about new programming, our arts education initiative. You can buy a ticket to a new, uh, a new performance. You can order a cocktail or two uh, from this. But it's a form of communication where two things. One, we can take care of our customer better. We can really expose the artist and the mission of the art center better. Um, and it's a revenue generator for the art center. So prototypes being developed, we have potential sponsors for that. And so through technology and a lot of the other aspects that our board is, is letting us have the opportunity to explore, we're really trying to make it a unique space. And so um, in many different the, ways. So yeah. tech, I don't talk about it as much, but that's the, that's the upside. I mean, this whole technology thing, um, it's still, even in the, in the greatest centers you go to, they are behind, I think, on the technology side, as compared to what an app developer, say, or somebody that works for Apple, or something, somebody that really knows how to use technologies, the arts world is sort of way behind.